today's class, we will be continuing task number two, but it's assessment criteria. And we will be covering 2.1, assessment criteria 2.2 and 3.1. There is a slight difference uh, between your course outline and the assignment brief. So the lecture I'm making is from the assignment brief because that is the correct one. Formal communication system that should be used to communicate with the consumers or the customers. Please evaluate different systems. Now, this is the directly question taken out from your assignment brief. In this, we will be discussing that what formal communication is and how its system, they are differing from one to uh, from one another. And the command verb is evaluate. That is, we will be focusing on strengths, weaknesses, similarities, and differences as well. First, what communication is. Now, this is the process of exchanging information, ideas, thoughts, or feelings between individuals or groups. It involves a sender, a message, a channel of communication, a receiver, and a feedback. Effective communication is essential for understanding, cooperation, and the successful conveyance of the intended messages. So overall, what communication is, it is, it could be one-way communication channel, it could be two-way, where we receive and perceive the information and give our feedback. For example, consider a team project in a workplace. The project manager, that is the sender, needs to communicate the project goals timelines, and expectations to the team members, that is the receivers. He is the sender at the moment, and the normal workers, they are the receivers. The manager might use team meetings, that is the channel, mode, medium, to convey this information verbally, read the project documentation, that is the message, and outlining the details, that is whatsoever steps and process it would be including in that specific project and encourage the team members to ask questions or provide the feedback, that is overall feedback. So communication is all about the sender, receivers, channel, what the message was, and a feedback. Now we, are be, uh, we will be doing the formal communication. Formal communication. Now this refers to the official, organized, and structured way where the information is transmitted within an organization. It follows predefined channels, protocols, and is often documented. That is, everything is predefined. It is already said. We only have to follow it. Formal communication is crucial for the official announcements, policies, procedures, and other business-related information as well. For example, again, the components are going to be the same in the formal communication as well, the way it was in communication. Imagine a large corporate sector introducing a new HR policy. HR department, that is the sender, it communicates the details of the policy, including the changes in the leave policies and performance evaluation through a company-wide email channel. That is, one email is going to be sent towards the members of all the department holders. The information is documented in an official HR handbook, that is the message providing a reference for the employees. Employees can acknowledge their understanding or seek the clarification through a designed HR helpline that is the feedback. Even when you people, you got an official email, it is not only you, your other friends and peer groups, they also get the same email as well. Communication is the broader process of exchanging information while the formal communication specifically refers to the structure and official exchanges within an organizational context. At the moment, we all are doing the communication. It is a two-way communication. You guys are perceiving and receiving the message. But when we are in an organization, in a corporate sector, in the industry, then it is to be a formal way of communicating. This is the difference. Both verbal and written communication methods can be formal, depending on the context and purpose. And we do have informal communication as well, which we use in our daily lives. One by one, we will be considering the points. Websites. Now, the company websites serve as a central hub for the information, product details, and consumer support. They are designed to be easily navigable and informative as well. For example, an e-commerce site providing product details, pricing, and consumer reviews. Whether you open the website in the middle of night, 4 a.m., you're going to get all the details. Even the customer service is too available. 
strength and the drawbacks, the considerations. Websites provide a centralized platform for the detailed info, product service showcases, and online transactions. They are accessible 24 by 7, allowing the consumers to engage there at their convenience. Like when you pay through the card or you go, go ahead with the online payment, you will get a discount. Rather than when you go for the cash on delivery things and code and DCs, you are going to be um, charged a bit high. Some consumers may prefer personal interactions and the effectiveness relies on the user-friendly design and navigation. That is the consumer service. They want you to be dealt brochures. Printed or digital brochures offer a concise overview of products, services, and company information. They are often used for marketing purposes as well. For example, a travel agency's brochure detailing vacation packages, destinations, and booking information. The flyers, which we normally used to see, and still they are on, loaded on the websites and social media. We have strengths and consideration. They are often tangible, that is, you can feel and touch, which really appealing way to present information, that is what the D graphic designer do. They can be distributed physically or digitally and are effective for marketing and product launches. Limited space may constrain the amount of information conveyed and their impact may vary based on distribution methods. Like the brochures, they are mostly off one page. Not even the other site, only one single site. However, the prospectus, they are kind of leaflets. Letters. Traditional letters are still used for the formal communication they are typically employed for the personalized messages, official notification, or the legal methods. A bank sending a formal letter to consumer regarding a loan approval. This is true. Formal letters convey the professionalism and are suitable for the official communications announcements or the personalized messages, like still in Pakistan, the post office. They accept the letters, and people do write letters. They provide a physical record of communication. And the consideration of it is, for it is slower compared to the digital methods, and there might be delays and delivery as well. Obviously, if there is rain going on or there is another casualty, then definitely your letters are not going to be transmitted within an hour or uh, within four hours. It might take at least 48 hours. Newsletters. Periodic newsletters are a way to share updates, promotions, and relevant info with a consumer base. They help in keeping consumers engaged. For example, a software company mostly, uh, what they do is on the monthly basis, the newsletter featuring the new product releases. That is the upcoming one and the newly launched. They get the updates and the tech tips. Periodic newsletters maintain consumer engagement, provide updates, and can be used for the promotions. They offer a consistent means of communication. And the consideration is, overuse may lead to disinterest, and relevance is the key to retaining the consumer attention. Like when we are addicted to book, literally in our conscious mind, which is not sleeping when we are sleeping at the time in the night or even in the daytime, we do get the dreams. It is not like it is going to happen or something like that, but it is the conscious mind which is uh, active at that moment. Then we have email. Email is a versatile tool for the formal communication till 21st and so on century. We are bound to get the emails and send the emails because it is the perfect formal way of communication. It is used for the various purposes like the consumer support, promotions, and announcements. An online retailer sending the personalized email offers to the consumer based on their purchase history. Like when we go to the shop, they do ask our emails and phone numbers. Why they are asking? Just to update us with their purchase and new upcoming offers. Strength. Email is a versatile tool for the direct personalized communication. It allows for timely updates, promotions, and consumer support. Consideration. Risk of emails being marked as spam, and some consumers may prefer alternative communication channels as well. Telephone calls. Direct communication over the calls allows for the real-time interaction. It is often used for resolving queries, conducting surveys, or providing support. Like, people do call us now, and they ask, what do you think about this product? How was your purchase? 
a telecommunication company contacting a consumer to discuss a new service plan. Then for the consideration part, we can discuss some consumers may find unsolicited calls intrusive, and there might be time zone or language barriers. That is why in the call centers, they are officially operated at night. Why? Because they are the one which can deal with the consumers uh, sitting in any part of the world, regardless of the time zone. Facebook is Skype, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, WhatsApp video calls. We do have Messenger video calls. And uh, there is another app as well, Snapchat, Instagram, and so on. Personal meetings are essential for the building relationships, addressing the complex issues and providing personalized services as well. For example, a financial advisor is meeting with the client to discuss investment strategies. Consideration, logistically challenging for the widespread consumer basis and may not be practical for the routine communication, obviously. We can do that annual basis or weekly, monthly. Social media. Social media platforms are used for the consumer engagement, announcements, and addressing concerns publicly. A clothing brand using Instagram to showcase new collections respond to consumer inquiries and run the promotions. Considerations could be public nature may require careful management of comments and effectiveness depends on the target audience's social media usage. Right now, uh, this is a very nice opportunity for you people to learn the skill of social media marketing and social media management. The people learn a lot. In all these formal communication channels, it is essential for the organization to maintain consistency in the messaging, professionalism, and a consumer-centric approach. Different channels serve different purposes, and an effective communication strategy can involve, often involve a mix of these methods based on the nature of the message and the preferences of the target audience. Each formal communication system has its strengths and considerations. And the choice often depends on the nature of the message, the preferences of the target audience, and the overall communication strategy of the organization. A well-balanced approach, considering the strengths and limitations of each system, can enhance the overall consumer communication effectiveness. Now, the points which we discussed, they were all from the indicative content. Now, we will be doing a scenario which will be involving a fictional company, XYZ, let's say. It is an electronics one, and they use the various form of communication channels to interact with the consumers. XYZ Electronics launches a new smart home device. This is the scenario. This electronics company, a leading tech company, is set to launch its latest smart home device, the Home Hub 9000. To effectively communicate with the consumers, they utilize multiple formal communication channels. Website. The XYZ Electronics updates its website with a dedicated page for the Home Hub, uh, home hub 9000. This page includes detailed information about the device, its features, pricing, and a secure online ordering system. For example, consumer visiting the website can explore a virtual tour of the home hub, watch demonstration videos, and find facts for the more information. For the brochure part, we can say, this electronics creates a digital and printed brochure showcasing the home hub. These are distributed in the stores, mails to the existing consumers, and available for the download from the website. Example could be the brochure highlights the key features such as voice activated controls, energy efficiency, and compatibility with other smart home devices. This is for sure that this XYZ electronics they are using the online brochure schemes rather than home to home and niche um, country to country. Email existing consumers receive personalized emails announcing the launch, providing the special discounts for the early orders, and including a link to the product page on the website. Example could be an email might feature testimonials from the beta testers who have already experienced the betters, the benefits of the home hub. Social media, the XYZ Electronics leverages social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to create excitement around the home hub. The poster teaser videos, like they post teaser videos, countdowns, and engage with the consumers through comments and direct messages.
Examples would be a Facebook post could include a live Q&A session where the consumers can ask questions about the device and XYZ electronics response in real time. Then we have telephone calls in face-to-face. -face. The company establishes a dedicated consumer support hotline for the inquiries about the home hub. Trained representatives are available to provide information, address concerns, and assess with the ordering process. Example could be a consumer call to inquire about the specific feature and compatibility with their existing smartphone home setup. For the face-to-face -face part, what it says, XYZ Electronics hosts an inclusive launch event where the consumers, influencers, and the media representatives can experience home hub firsthand. Before getting into the hands of the general public, they are the people who get to uh, feel and use that XYZ product. Company representatives are available to demonstrate the device and answer the questions. For example, a potential consum consumer attends the event, interacts with the device, and discusses its benefits with the XYZ Electronics representatives. In this scenario, the XYZ Electronics employs a comprehensive approach utilizing a mix of formal communication channels to ensure that information about the home hub reaches a wide audience in a clear and engaging manner. This strategy helps the company generate awareness, address consumer inquiries, and drive sales for the new product. This was the example which I provided for you for the assessment criteria 2.1. Now we will be doing assessment criteria 2.2. An analysis of the effectiveness of the social media to communicate with the consumers, please use the current examples. Now here at the command verb, you can easily see that it is the analysis. All the negative positive aspects and detail explanation importance is required. Then the question itself is about the effectiveness of social media. That how the social media platforms, they help us in communicating with the consumers. Analysis of social media effectiveness in consumer communication. The first one is generating the business and assessing the market segments. Effectiveness. Social media platforms are highly effective in reaching a broad audience and targeting specific market segments through demographic and interest-based advertising. That is, there are certain ads, there are certain websites which are only accessible to those people who are above 16, 18, or 20. So they, only they can access those things. Example, that is why the YouTube, they have launched the YouTube Kids as well. It is only demonstrated to the kids. A cosmetic brand or pharmaceutical brand leveraging the Instagram and Facebook ads to reach the beauty enthusiast and drive sales through targeted promotions. Once you search something, on your Insta feed, for example, um, XYZ recipe, you're going to get posts related to it. Networking. Social media facilitates networking with the consumers, industry professionals, and influencers, fostering a relationship and expanding the organization's reach. Example, LinkedIn is used by the businesses to connect with other companies professionals and potential clients sharing the updates and insights. The Indeed as well. Image enhancement. Social media enables the companies to shape and showcase their image. Platforms allow for the dynamic content creation to portray a contemporary, traditional, energized, or cutting-edge image. That is all the Adobe specialist and the graphic designers they do. Example, Nike uses Twitter and Insta to convey a cutting edge, dynamic image, showcasing the innovative product launches and engaging with a younger sports oriented audience, that is the youth. Public relations PR. Social media serves as a powerful PR tool, allowing the companies to manage their reputation, goodwill, addresses the crisis and communicate transparently with the public. Example, Starbucks utilizes the Twitter and Instagram for the PR purposes responding to consumer feedback, announcing the sustainability initiatives, and addressing the controversies. The other brands as well. Social media provides real-time updates on the industry trends, consumer preferences, and market dynamics, helping the organizations stay current. 
that is to be updated to be vigilant with the industry trends and fashion. Example, tech companies like Apple and Google used Twitter and LinkedIn to share the updates on product releases, partnerships, and advancements in the tech industry. Then we have the other points which are not in the indicative content. These are the considerations plus the weaknesses, you can say. Engagement metrics. Monitoring likes, shares, comments, and the follower growth provides insights into the effectiveness of social media efforts. That is the reach of the particular post or the reel or video. Target audience alignment. Understanding the primary demographics of the each platform helps tailor content to the target audience. Again, whatsoever kind of your search is going to be, you will be seeing the things according. Consistency. Regular and consistent posting maintains audience engagement and reinforces the desert, desired brand image. Like the one people used to say about YouTube, if you're opening a channel, even on a TikTok, you have to post regularly. If you're going to do that, you're going to be reached way too quickly rather than the normal YouTuber or uh, a TikToker. Adaptability. Staying informed about the platform algorithm changes and evolving social media trends ensures the continued effectiveness. Like I was watching a um, post yesterday of a school learning Lishes, and I can clearly see the post, the behind of the post that the graphics they used, they were using a normal um, desktop page rather than using a perfect tool. So it was a big mistake, but they were not considering it. Why? Because they were not having enough grip and knowledge over it. Social media is a multifaceted tool that, when strategically utilized, can significantly enhance the consumer communication. Its effectiveness depends on the alignment of communication objectives, the strengths of each platform, consistent engagement, and adaptability to the evolving trends. By leveraging the social media for the business generation, Networking, image enhancement, public relations, and staying up to date organizations can build strong and meaningful connections with their consumer base. Then we have the real life scenario gained for the social media effectiveness for the consumer communication. Companies, the XYZ Fitness Apparel, the purpose of that organization is what? The image enhancement and the business generation platform they're using for the investment and selling the apparel is Instagram. Scenario is all about the XYZ Fitness Apparel launches a sustainable collection that is a greener way. XYZ Fitness Apparel, a renowned fitness clothing brand, decides to launch a new sustainable collection to align with its contemporary and eco-friendly image. The primary goal are to enhance the brand image, generate the business, and communicate its commitment to sustainability. They are a known brand. What they are doing at the moment, they were purposely a renowned brand, but now they're focusing on the, uh, to be more greener and sustainable towards the environment. Here we will be discussing the image enhancement. Strategy is XYZ Fitness Apparel utilizes the Instagram focusing on visually appealing content that highlights the sustainable materials ethical production processes, and the overall modern aesthetic of the collections. Execution could be the company shares behind-the-scenes videos, interviews with the designers, and visually stunning images of the sustainable product. You have to keep in mind that you are using the medium of communication or the mode of Instagram. Business generation. To drive the sales, the fitness apparel launches exclusive promotions and limited time offers exclusively announced on the Instagram. The company creates engaging posts and stories showcasing the new collection with the direct links to the online store for easy purchase. Then we have engagement and networking. Now the fitness apparel engages with the influencers and the fitness enthusiast on Instagram to expand its reach and create a community around the sustainable lifestyle. Execution could be the brand collaborates with the eco-conscious influencers Encouraging them to share their experiences with the sustainable collection, like our youth, what they do is what their favorite influencer, they just promote the product with the code of discount code. They just 
quickly grab that product because they trust them. They have a loyalty between them, the influencer and the person you. Public relation. To address potential questions about the sustainability claims, XYZ features apparel proactively shares detailed information about sourcing, production, and environmental impact. Execution could be the company post infographics, conducts Instagram live sessions with the design team, respond transparently to the consumer comments. Then we have up to date. This stays up to date with the fitness and the fashion trends, ensuring its content remains relevant and resonates with the target audience. Execution would be regular post features not only the sustainable collection, but also the fitness tips workout routines and updates on the industry tents, rather than uh, forcing them and indulging them in purchasing your product, you can indulge their mind. You can play with their mind by giving the lectures, videos, what to eat, what not to eat, how to stay fit, exercises, routine, workout, side baths. Now, what were the result of the whole scenario? The sustainable collection post receives high engagement with the likes, comments, and the shares, indicating a positive response from the audience. For the business growth, the exclusive promotion drive a surge in the online sales, the one in which they were giving the promotions. With the many consumers, mentioning the sustainability aspect as a key factor in their purchase decision. Positive public perception, PR, Transparent communication about sustainability efforts fosters a positive public image, building trust and loyalty among the consumers. And in the end, this is the conclusion. In the scenario, the XYZ Fitness Apparel effectively uses Instagram as a communication tool to achieve its objectives of enhancing its image, generating the business and fostering a community around sustainability. The brand's strategic and authentic approach on social media contributes to its overall success in consumer communication and engagement. The last assessment criteria for today's lecture is 3.1. An assessment of the impact of relationships found in the organizations on the effective communication. Here you have to focus on the word assessment as a command verb. Then the question is about the impact of the relation between the organization of the effective communication. Team cohesion. They are going to be two aspects because the word is assessment. We are going to talk about the positive and negative aspects in it. Positive impact on communication. Teams with a strong cohesion tend to communicate more effectively. Open communication channels foster collaboration and idea sharing. Trust and camaraderie with a theme enhance the willingness to communicate open. When we are going to talk as in a general discussion among two people, four people or sex, there is going to be room of discussion, room for discussion, and we are going to communicate more effectively. However, over cohesion might lead to groupthink, inhibiting the diverse perspectives. That is, one, two, three, four, five people, they are going to have their own opinion, own thinking. Leaks within a team may create barriers to communication with those outside the group. That is, who are not involved in specific discussion, they are going to have other thoughts. Personal conflict. Healthy conflict can lead to constructive discussions and innovative solutions. Addressing and resolving conflicts promotes transparency and trust. That is being obeyed. When we are going to discuss with one another, everything should be clear in mind and between and among the com communication. However, unresolved conflicts may lead to communication breakdowns. Individuals may avoid communication to prevent further conflict, hindering the collaborations as well. Favoritism. Post positive relation with the team members can enhance communication. Recognizing and rewarding the merit can motivate employees to communicate effectively. That is, uh, giving them rewards, fringe benefits, kind of. Negative impact on communication could be favoritism may lead to resentment and distrust among the team members. You can take the example of the classrooms as well. If the teacher is doing favoritism among the candidates and the students, then what will happen? The other students, they're going to be demotivated. They don't want to feel uh, to be attentive in the class anymore. 
Communication channels may be strained if certain individuals receive preferential treatment. That is again favoritism. Hierarchical line management culture. Clear hierarchical structures from top to bottom or bottom to top can provide clarity in communication channels. A positive organizational culture encourages open communication from top to bottom. However, hierarchical structures might lead to information loss and hinder the lateral communication. A rigid organizational culture may discourage employees from expressing innovative ideas or dissenting the opinions as well. That is, not agreeing upon certain things. Considerations. These are the rest of the points which are not mentioned in the indicative content. Communication training. Organizations can provide training to enhance communication skills and conflict resolutions. Transparent policies being opaque. Clear policies on the favoritism, conflicts of the interest, and communication protocols can mitigate the negative impacts. That is, if you're taking the precautions beforehand, before the problem, then obviously we're going to navigate the problems. Cultural shift, create a culture that value. Open communication, that is free communication, and diverse, and the value, diverse perspectives can foster a positive impact on the relationship. Because in an organization, not only you are working, the other members are also the part of it. You have to give things accordingly. This is the conclusion for the assessment criteria 3.1. The relationships within organizational play, within an organization play a crucial role in shaping the effectiveness of communication. Positive relationships such as team cohesion and the healthy conflict resolution contribute to communicative and collaborative work environment. Conversely, negative dynamics like personal conflicts and favoritism can impede communication channels. The organizational hierarchy, the line management, and the culture they also significantly and more importantly influence how the information flows within the organization. Therefore, fostering a positive relationship and addressing the negative dynamics is vital, essential, necessary for creating a communication friendly organizational culture. So this was the whole um, breakdown of the assessment criteria 3.1, the points which we discussed in detail. Again, we have a real life scenario for this as well. Impact of organizational relationships on communication. The company name is Tech Solutions, and the context is about the implementation of what of a new project. The point is team cohesion. The project team, consisting of developers, designers, and the project managers, has a strong sense of cohesion. Regular team building activities and the open communication channels contribute to a collaborative environment. Team members freely share ideas and provide constructive feedback during the project meetings leading to the innovative solution. So the points which we discussed, now you can relate it with this real life scenario as well. However, during a critical decision-making phase, the team's over cohesion becomes evident. Some members hesitate to express resonating opinions, fearing it might disrupt the perceived unity. That is, they don't want to break that bond of discussion anymore. This lack of diverse perspectives leads to suboptimal project strategy. Personal conflict. The project manager encourages open discussions and addresses conflicts promptly. A recent disagreement between the team members regarding the project timeline was resolved through facilitated discussions. The resolution not only improved the timeline, but also enhanced the team cohesion as well. However, in another instance, a lingering personal conflict between designer and a developer surfaces during a client presentation. The tension is palpable, and the communication breakdown negatively affects the project's images. Then we have favoritism point. The CEO of the board of director, known for recognizing and rewarding hard work, publicly acknowledges the contributions of the team members. This positive reinforcement motivates employees and enhances the overall morale. 
As a result, employees are more willing to communicate their achievements and challenges. Negative impact. However, some team members perceive the favoritism in the project assignment. This perception leads to strained communication, a kind of tension within the team member, as those who feel overlooked may withhold valuable insights or ideas. Hierarchical line management culture. The stick solution, the clear hierarchical structure ensures that important project updates flow down from senior and management to the team members efficiently. The open door policy encourages to of the questions of the feedback of the communication to the team members to communicate their concerns directly to the supervisors. However, the rigid organizational culture stifles creativity. Junior team members are hesitant to propose alternative solutions to the technical problem, fearing the repercussions. The hierarchical structure also creates bottlenecks in the lateral communication between different project teams. Considerations against same points. Tech solutions could implement communication and conflict resolution training to empower employees to express their opinions more freely, giving them an open hand. Clear communication protocols, establishing clear communication protocols and encouraging the diverse perspectives in decision making can address the negative impacts of team cohesion and hierarchical structures. Regular feedback. Regular feedback sessions can help identify and address favoritism concerns, fostering a fair and inclusive work environment. In this real life scenario at Tech Solutions, the impact of organizational relationships on communication is evident. While positive relationships contribute to collaborative environment, negative dynamics such as over cohesion, personal conflict, and perceived favoritism can hinder the effective communication. These are the points which are discussed. Perceived favoritism, personal conflict, cohesion. Addressing these issues through training, clear communication protocols, Feedback mechanism is crucial for hosting a healthy communication culture within the company, within the tech solutions. This was the real life scenario breakdown. Now, this is the glossary. This could be a kind of summary as well. The terms and the things which we discussed today, it is a kind of breakdown of it. Formal communication, first thing which we discussed. Structure and the official communication within an organization often documented and following the predefined channels. At the moment, we do our, we all are doing the communication, but this could be informal, I can say, because I'm giving the random examples as well, rather than being way too formal with you people, because it will create a tension and a strict environment in the class. However, for the communication channels, various methods or the mediums used for the communication, such as we discussed, Websites, brochures, letters, newsletters as well, emails, telephone, call, face-to-face, -face, and social media platforms as well. Then we talked about the analysis of the social media factor. For the social media, which we discussed, online platforms that facilitate the creation and the sharing of content, fostering user interaction examples, which will be including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and others as well. For the engagement metrics, quantitative measures of how users interact with the content on social media, including like, share, comment, follow, follower growth, and etc. For algorithm changes, adjustments made by the social media platforms to determine the content users see affecting the visibility of the post. That is, it depends on the holder and the owner of the specific post that whether they want to show it publicly or to be keeping it private. And in the end, we discussed assessment of the impact. Here, team cohesion, the degree to which the team members work together towards a common goal, fostering unity and collaboration. For the person conflict, disagreements or the tensions between individuals that may affect the teamwork and communication negatively. That is why it is known as a conflict. Favoritism, the practice of showing preferential treatment to certain individuals, potentially leading to resentment and impacting the communication dynamics. Hierarchical structure, an organizational structure with the levels of authority indicating the chain of command.
top to bottom, bottom to top. It is a vice versa game. Lastly, organization and culture. The shared values, beliefs, and practices that shape the behavior of individuals within an organization. 